Hey, what's going on, everyone? Eric Ross of the Get With The Eye here. The NAB, the broadcasting show in Las Vegas, which you hear basically um, all of the newest broadcasting things, some tech te uh, some technology things, new hard drives, all this kind of stuff, new basically broadcasting cameras, DSLR filmmaking stuff, all this stuff. That's where you hear about it. NAB in Las Vegas. 2015 just wrapped up recently, and I gathered a bunch of of, the, of my favorite top tech things that have come out of NAB. So what are some things to look forward to? Maybe some things that might interest you. Yes, some of this can help your photography, but it is video related as well. I do have a video background uh, that I do as well, not just photography. So what am I talking about? NAB 2015 top tech round out. Who, who stood out to me? So there might be some brands you may or may not have heard of, and if you're not in the video industry 100%, you may not understand, but some of this stuff is great. And what was NAB essentially primary uh, targeted towards? And essentially it was 4K video, mentions of 6K video, uh, you know, something that came out, uh, I'll jump into that as well, and essentially drone photography and controlling your drone photography. So let's jump into some of these things. And one of the first things I want to talk about, speaking of drone photography, is this free fly mimic. Uh, basically, they've done a lot of little drone stuff here and there and remotely controlling, uh, having gimbals for drone photography. And it's just really, really strong thing they have. This is an awesome product to where there's no dob. Oh my God, I do that every time. No dobs or knobs. There's no knobs or dials. It's 500 bucks. And it, once again, it primarily controls your drone. And they even showed a demo of uh, with like Chase Jarvis, who's in this picture here uh, on No Film School. And they use it, and even a little girl was using it. And it's how they were able to operate this. And it's obviously extremely simple. That's 500 bucks if you're interested in uh, basically something like that. Now, another thing that kind of came out, and I really have a slide for this or, you know, a thing to show, is Adobe CC, the Creative Cloud. They announced some big, big, big. Uh, changes coming up to their content and to what you're going to be able to download, purchase, or whatever you want, all that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of you don't know, I actually used to be into graphic design a little bit, but mainly animation and video game animation back, you know, years ago, nothing professionally. It was just something I tried out for maybe two years. I just didn't enjoy it. But one of the cool things is, and it's really interesting, I might tempt my interest again, is their new Adobe Character Animator. It's essentially you could do real live time um, animation, and it's just really kind of like in the after effects format uh, or premiere pro style so it's really cool that's really interesting and they announced a, a few premiere pro upgrades that kind of tempt me as well so that's something from adobe uh right there now one of the biggest one of the biggest winners i think is of black magic they have announced several new things i'll show you the two things back to back but they are really trying to Ever since their, you know, their cinema camera, they've really kind of come out more. It wasn't just a back-end design of things. It's just really interesting what they've uh, come out with. And now they're really trying to target more of the industry at a lighter and uh, less expensive of a price compared to some others. So what is one of the main things they came out with? It's something that has 15, uh, uh, 15 dynamic stop uh, range uh, so low light is going to be amazing with this camera. Hopefully, you know, we'll see. And it's their Black Magic Mini 4.K sensor. So it's ENG style, but it's smaller. You know, as you see right here, down here, it will rest on your shoulder, but it's extremely portable. It's light. It's under seven pounds. That's actually, you know, pretty damn good. It has a rolling or global shutter, which uh, if you do not understand, that might be a whole different video. And it does um, HD video up to 160 frames, full HD, up to 160 frames per second. It's got a five inch flip out touchscreen. So as you see, that touchscreen is now really kind of coming out um, into the industry. And it's just going to be $3,000 with a 4K sensor or with the new 4.6K sensor. It's going to be about $5,000. Also, they came out, they love their smaller camera. So Black Magic Micro Cine Camera. Uh, this isn't going to have a uh, screen on it, so you have to use something externally. Uh, it does have your SD card slots. It is drone essentially targeted or smaller area targeted. So it's going to be 4K. This thing's going to come out about, you know, $1,000. And once again, it's mainly targeted towards, you know, these smaller end things but you know it runs off of the lpe6 canon battery and that's something canon made a battery that everyone is using and you'll notice this as i go through and finish off this list 
that is being used primarily heavily. So the uh, the micro cine uh, black magic, it's a little interesting thing. Will it be successful? I don't know. You know, there's the back end of it, uh, but it looks easy. But you do need an external screen for that. But it's actually pretty cheap for what it gives you. Next, this was one of the big announcements by Panasonic. Once again, I know this is more filmmaker heavy, but it's just interesting to see what is able to come. Now, go back seven years, eight years, um, when I mainly, I don't even know if it was that long. Basically, when I mainly started college in 2008, whatever that comes out to, um, we had we were using the Panasonic DVX 100A and 100B. The B was kind of a little bit more of a replacement to that. And that was the industry standard at the time. And this is kind of in the same realm as that. And it's you will pay a hefty $5,000 price for this. But you have 4K, four-third inch sensor. It's equipped with a Leica Zoom, a 4K uh, lens 2.8, which is great. It has a 4K 60p recording, so it's usable. It's not like some BS stuff. 13 times optical zoom, 12 stops of dynamic range, and who is it targeting? The documentary-esque light portable videographer. So something to really look forward to, and it's just, especially if you're really in the industry, and I know I do once again have a lot of filmmakers that watch this channel as well, um, this is something to look forward to because of its versatility. Now, I didn't know if this really stuck out to me because the pricing on this is astronomically insane. Um, but I, I figured, you know, might as well cover it. It's the GoPro Hero 4. I don't know if it necessarily stands out to me, but uh, it's the GoPro Hero Cast, not just the 4. This works with the GoPro Hero 4 and the 3 Plus, and it's basically a wireless transmitter system for live broadcast. It's a micro transmitter, and it's $7,500. Now, why is it relevant? It's because ESPN, NHL, uh, a lot of these other, you know, Grunge shows, they are using this for live TV to get these insane top angles and everything like that, which is great if you have the light, but it still doesn't solve, you know, GoPros and low light are terrible. So, you know, keep that in mind, but a lot of these events, they're lit up pretty well anyway, and it has a 40 minute battery lifetime. So GoPro HeroCast thought it was worth a mention because of what it can do. The next thing is the Canon C300 Mark II. Now the C300 was a huge seller and a success for Canon, and now it should be by late summer. Yeah, okay, so September 2015 uh, is when this will come out. As you see, it's $16,000. Not targeted for you, I guess. But um, essentially, super 35 millimeter CMOS sensor does 4K, does your 1080 at 60 frames. It does its popular AVC H264 codec. It's good compression uh, and a PL lens mount, all that kind of stuff. But it's incorporating two CFAS card slots. So it's really kind of restricting you into what you're going to have to use. It's this push for C, uh, C fast cards for these 4k and now in the future as well as you'll notice in some of these videos as well so canon c300 mark III, that's going to come out you know if you're into video you'll fully appreciate that now this interesting little guy is the small hd 502 monitor basically looks like an iphone uh, like an iphone essentially it's not a touch screen though it's aluminum it has an sd card which you can use things and you can have up to two lpe6 canon batteries to draw that as well but essentially it's going to be twelve hundred dollars it's a full 1080p which is which is interesting because you don't get that a lot right now for 1200 bucks that's your monitor um and essentially you can get it with a big eyepiece which kind of turns it into a bigger viewfinder for fifteen hundred dollars now when this came out i kind of tweeted about and i asked about the price of small hd and they said yeah you know right recommend their uh Basically, their HD like seven, and I said that is ridiculously overpriced. But for twelve hundred dollars, you might be able to get a better monitor. But this does look interesting. I do like small HD product stuff. I just wish they were more damn affordable. Small HD, please lower your prices so that more of the industry can buy your stuff. Now, one of the interesting things that Sony came out with, and this isn't just gear, is that they released Canalyst, their non-linear editor. And basically what this is, it's targeting Sony-specific cameras to, hold, to handle their native media. So it's going to be more versatile. It's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be extremely better for your workflow if you're using Sony cameras. Uh, and they're saying that you can get their older stuff and what, you know, not 100% of the information is out there for 200 bucks from Sony's site. But it's definitely worth um, a look at. And one other thing that I didn't pull up here was the Manfrotto uh, Director. It's basically going to be a $500 um, 
It's going to be a $500 app essentially and what it's going to do is you're going to take your iPad Air and turn it into a monitor. So that's just something to be on the lookout for. That's going to come out in a few months as well. Um, it's very tempting because I do have an iPad Air, but once again, it is $500, but it's, you know, you're going to get a nice little monitor out of that using something you already have and you're not paying $1,200 for something. Another thing I did want to mention just because it was out there and it is a 6K camera and that's the Cinemax or the Kinemax, whatever you want to call it. 6K camera it does 6K, 4K, 3K, 2K. It gives you a whole line. 14 stops of dynamic range, and I just really wanted to just show you and tell you that this is now on the rise as well. So embrace your 1080p, but get ready for 4K, but 6K and 8K resolution is already out there. Way more than you really need to know or really need to understand at the moment, but it's out there and, you know, it's coming up quickly. And I really have two more to kind of round out this and just give some final thoughts. And this is a very interesting thing. It is expensive, but if you're doing video, this might be something uh, that really sticks out to you. And that is the, the Letus Felix Helix uh, Jr. And that's basically a $3,000 uh, DSLR filmmaking gimbal in which you can obviously, you know, it's your steady cam, all that kind of stuff. It balances out, but it's geared towards, as you see, basically the Panasonic GH4, your mirrorless line, your lighter cameras, not really huge and heavy cameras, and the Sony A7S, for example. So that's what you're getting. And, you know, it's made of magnesium alloy. It's under five pounds with the, um, with the battery extender on it, and it holds up to seven to eight pounds. They said seven pounds is essentially the max. But the cool thing about this and what a lot of a lot of these gimbals and free fly things don't have is a flat bottom. So you can set it down without it being, you know, leaning on your lens or putting pressure on your mount or anything like that. It can set uh, flat down. But as I said, it's going to be three thousand dollars. And one of the biggest things is if you're not used to these stabilizers and gimbals and all this kind of stuff is when you make changes. So essentially with a normal stabilizer, you're going to set it up. You have to weight it so that way it, you know, it's right, you know, depending on however it is. But then when you make a change, say you zoom in, say you change a lens, you got to rebalance it and, you know, redo it again. But with this, it's saying you don't need to do that at all. It self does it, which is amazing. That's fantastic. So that's, uh, that's really awesome. So what is one of the last things to really round out the show for me? Uh, you know, and I, essentially to me, it's going to be the DGI Phantom 3. Once again, I really want to get, you know, one of these drones eventually. I've flown a couple um, but they're so expensive right now. And the Phantom 3, it's going to be a professional and an advanced model. So what is the difference? Essentially, you're going to get 12 megapixels on either model. The professional model is going to be 4K, but I think for only two or $300 more. Uh, but for two or $300 less, you get the advanced model for full 1080p HD video uh, in regards to that. So you're going to get your 4K, 1.2 miles of coverage, 12 megapixels. It's going to have three axis. Let's show you right here. A three axis gimbal uh, with a f2.8 lens. So all of this, everything aside, NAB is the big show. There is a ton of information I just threw at you, but there is a lot of great things to come. It's showing you what the industry is giving and what kind of tech is coming. And some of the things might impact the photography market as well. So a lot of good monitors aside will help your focus. Filmmaking, there's 100% of great things coming out. But what are some of your favorite things as well? That, that came out of this, whether it be a drone, whether it be some kind of gimbal, you know, a transmitter, uh, maybe a new hard drive or something. What are some things that, you know, I mentioned that you liked or some things that you personally liked and stood out? Please let me know down in the comments below.